we have to still state that there's not really a whole lot on the line for the two teams when it comes to the standings. This is them already testing the waters for the playoffs a bit. Just seeing what they can pull off today, just testing the opponent's strength, and also, of course, making a showing for the fans here. But the outcome of the match is not going to influence the playoffs at all. Yeah. So both of the teams just like testing because there is a good chance that they are going to face off against each other in the playoffs in the second round since we are using a stepladder system. We are trying to just rise through the ranks. Number five plays number six. The winner against number four. The winner of that match is going then up against the number three and so on. So it's going to be an interesting match for sure with both the teams. Probably going to show us also a few off picks, especially the expert. And it'll be a good series, that's for sure. Looking later on today, North America will be coming right at you as we'll have B-Step and Tempo Storm facing off. Tempo Storm, one of the best in the league. B-Step continuing to show up here and there as they are continuing to float in the middle with the six and seven. And it will end with no tomorrow in team eight. Did you see those games yesterday with Naventic, by the way? Naventic, man, they had some crazy plays. Yeah, they had a couple of really crazy plays. Personally, I was also looking to see Suna on Genji. So we, of course, that Zuna meme has been around for so long and it's a lot of fun. He himself enjoys it quite a bit, but at the same time, he is an incredibly talented player. Mm. And seeing him on a high skill cap hero like Genji is always cool. So it was nice after we saw Europe to also see him perform and it was kind of fun, but in the end, it wasn't quite enough for them. Well, we'll see if the playing ducks have enough today to take on Expert. Let's see their thoughts here on the battlegrounds and the matches today. Uh, so the, our match versus playing ducks is our last match in the league and we already are at fourth place so we are not that concerned if we somehow manage to lose this game and we are preparing mostly for playoffs but we still think that this victory they will cement our place and we don't really want to play bad here we want to show that we're still better than other top four teams I don't think we have any communication problems. It's like sometimes we just have a day off. Um, if we don't get the trip we want, we struggle sometimes. So that might be the case and day off, but we'll be working on it and trying to fix that issue. I want to shout out to every duck who's flying around with us. It's great to have some with us and we feel the support and um, we just tr try to make some broads and I hope we do our best. I'm so proud of Chris Plosion. He punned. He dropped in the flying around con out his yeah. hands there. Nice job there, Chris Plosion. Auto he, win the day, obviously. He was very, very playful in that interview. Okay. All right. Well, the Ducks and X will be facing <laughs> pretty soon here. He just he loves to get in my head on that one, man. But we're not going to do it because the playing Ducks are going to be I'm really proud of you. showing up today. You pulled it off. I did pull it off, man. I've been pulling it off for like three weeks now. Give me some kudos, yeah, man. Yeah, but usually if I throw you one of those and it just is like, don't think about the, ro the pink elephant. And you immediately jump back onto it. And this time. It's good. Don't think about the pink elephant? What? You don't know that? No, I've never heard that phrase in my life. If you tell someone to not think about a pink elephant, it's the only thing they can think about. You're right. I'm thinking about a pink <laughs> elephant right now. <laughs> ah! Let's go ahead and talk about this match. The playing duck's going to be going to the first battleground. It's going to be picked up here by Expert, and we'll be going to Infernal Shrine. So, you mentioned it. If we see anything wonky today, it's probably going to be coming from Expert. And why not use this as a great testing ground to try out some weird strategies? I would not mind seeing another Probius. Yeah. Eddie Ardy has had a great time on Probius. We've seen the hero played several times by him. He even wrote a guide for the HGC website. And if you want to check that out, go to playheroes.com slash HGC. There's a guide from Eddie Ardy talking about Probius, how he feels the hero can be used. We have actually a lot of great articles over there. Great interview with Hazops, one of the leading characters in the big three, being such a huge esports veteran. We have seen also an Alaric guide. Mm. Of course, Alaric receiving a big rework pretty soon. But still, there's a lot of good stuff out there, so you should definitely check that out. Hoping for a Glorong Zeratul guide at some point in the future. But yes, check those out when you get the chance there. Uh, just go over to the website, and you'll be able to check out all of those awesome articles. Now, moving into Inferno Shrines, let's see what exactly will be picked up for our teams as it will now begin. The interesting part for me is looking at the two teams, both of them like to play Medivh. Mm. And we've been hearing about from Chris Plosion talking about drafts. Talking about how do we perform as a team if we don't get the draft we want. And he said they struggle. 
So right now, this is one of the heroes you oftentimes play here. They like to play mid -Eath. We've seen this several fall stats. We oftentimes talk about Sport Billy as a carry for his team. So these are really the heroes to watch out for in the draft, since it's something that Expert is probably going to contest quite highly. They will attempt to do so. And Inferno Shrine is usually the map that we see a lot of Greymane, Tychus from when it comes to playing Ducks. They love their Tychus. They move into it so much when the opportunity presents itself because they love to go for random pushes with the Shrines by popping Odin and getting aggressive. Typically, they'll move in for a Dahaka, but we have seen Nande on Ragnaros in the past, even him on Greymane. Yeah, that's another tool they can use. And Dahaka is banned out already. So trying to simply outsoak the opponent, rotate around them with the global is going to be a bit more tricky. Question then of course remains, does it make Fawcett rise in priority? And for now it doesn't. They go into Gul'dan. We have been talking in our earlier series already about how powerful he can be with the wave clear, his control over the shrine and horrifies. That's definitely a good pick. But we're still looking towards the Falstad, looking towards the Medivh. When are those going to come into play here? Well, per what we normally see in Europe, Starting to expect the Anubrak to come up. Whenever Golden gets picked up first, most of the time an Anubrak gets followed up. However, Bad Benny has been favoring a lot of variant as of late. Allows for his team to get in the aggressive engages that we've been wanting to see. But we do have to mention that there is a bit something different here. Last week we had a Thorough Angel subbing in. This week we have Blade back on the roster. So again, Ragnaros might be higher priority as Ragnaros has played a lot by Blade. He kind of enjoys playing it on this battleground. I have to talk about that also for just a moment. We've been talking that Blade is most likely going to be replaced by Ethereal Angel. Ethereal Angel has already subbed in for the team several times. And you would actually think that that would create a bit of a bad vibe in the team. That someone might be a bit salty here, that the synergy isn't there. And recently I was with them in comms and we've just been talking, watching North America, talking together a bit. And Blade was with a team in the same team speak. So it was absolutely fantastic to see how much... It was just a really cool atmosphere between them. So there was no resentment at all. There was just no bad feelings. They were joking around the entire time. Two of them were playing in the same Hero League game at the time. It was just bantering the entire match. It was really cool to see that, especially given the circumstances of the team. So there's no real bad feelings here that would result in a potentially bad play because of a synergy. That's awesome. Still friends, but still very respectable. Trying yeah. to make sure that they have the respect levels up. And it's really important to have that, especially when you're going to be a professional in a game. So we'll see how uh, Blade will continue to move forward in the future. It's obvious that he's a skilled player, and maybe he'll land on a different team if, of course, Expert decides to go ahead and move forward with a thorough. Now, in true tradition for Expert, they don't pick up the Anubrak as their counter pick. They move into double sport right away. They grab Ariel and Lucio, and Expert's known for this, switching up drafts on us and changing the way the game is played. So now we have two supports taken, one banned out. Let's just YOLO this, ban another one, and then take a fourth, and all of a sudden your support choke is right here. And they are actually swapping through the supports right now. Playing Ducks, they picked up a Nuparak. You mentioned a Nuparak as a potential early pick for Expert. Now that that doesn't happen because Oriel and Lucio were prioritized, the Ducks themselves take a Nuparak and the Sonya. Strong Shrine Control and also, of course, good for uh, Gul'dan. And as you can see here, we have Experts with a ban on Uther. So two supports banned, two taken, limiting the options for the Playing Ducks. I'm interested to see how Expert will actually manage this match simply for the mere fact that the Playing Ducks they have tools here that are impactful on Infernal Shrines. Gul'dan for clearing out the Shrine, Sonya for being in the front, a new rack for the Engage that you mentioned, Cocoon to stop the double support. Their draft right now is incredibly scary. But as always, you can't count Expert out. If we were looking at a normal team right now versus the Playing Ducks, I would start to lean heavily towards the Playing Ducks, maybe 70-30 already, just based on the first five picks. I'm very curious about the next two picks for Expert. You're yeah. definitely right. They are one of the teams that is scary to deal with. You just can't doubt them, man. And we've seen so many crazy picks. We have seen Synergy playing Shogal, for example. This is also a good Shogal map. And let's face it, the original team to bring Shogal back into the game was Expert. That's true. So they have so many different strategies, normal meta strats, completely off strats, and let's see what they're gonna do with this. The first thing that's being banned here, or the second thing is actually Zul'jin, as Expert now heads into this, the third and fourth pick. Playing Ducks must have had something in their minds here. Do you think an Abather 
Zul'jin may have been a possibility for Expert on this battleground. I feel like it would have been difficult, but if you can get a lead and get <laughs> Ultimate Evolution, maybe? When it comes to Expert, I've, I've stopped to try and make any suggestions like, of what they're going to take or, or, or where the line is. Yeah. With Expert, you don't know where the line is. They're trying yeah, things where push it. with any other team, you would say, this is crazy. You can't do that. But with Expert, it's... yeah. I don't know. I've read Abathur in the past, and that Zul'jin makes me think Abathur Zul'jin may have been picked. And Abathur is actually decent on this battleground if you don't lose forts first. If you lose forts, he has such a hard time. But if you're able to win one shrine phase of the first two, you're actually in a solid spot. Regardless, Zul'jin is not here. Expert will move into Greymane, and let's figure out their fourth pick. Tyrion. Okay, Greymane Tyrion. So shields on top of the double support and the heavy engage with Sanctification, possibly, and the Grey Man then just diving in, trying to get these kills. Coming back to your Abathur point, I think they would not have gone into Abathur. I don't think that necessarily when you want to play a Zul'jin, you need Abathur. Sure. He can be a good asset, but with a double support already in play, don't think it's uh, really needed, especially since if you are only looking towards the attack speed, or mainly towards the attack speed that Abathur can give you, we have Oriel with a similar function also later on in the game. Comes online a bit later, but still can help after 16. I think Abathur there is just good for like the body soaking and such. And you leave the three tandem together and you get aggressive with the pressure. The hat may be good, but regardless, let's see here. What's going to be picked up for the playing ducks now? They're going to need a healer, obviously. The support choke that you were mentioning is definitely very real right now. Now Furion, Uther not available as been banned out, and Ariel and Lucio are being picked up. Karazim or Lili are probably your best bets here. I guess they could think about... Uh, there's the Medivh. We've been mentioning Medivh a bit earlier. Oh, Rhaegar, of course, is still also available. But yeah, we've been talking about Medivh. This time, Falset is the one that has completely been ignored, but we have that Medivh where we even expect that Expert to maybe use Medivh. I think they still could have here, if not taken by the Ducks. But now we have Sport Billy on Medivh, and we know that his Leyline Seals are fantastic. Leyline Seals, his harass, the engage provides his team all characteristics that you will come to expect when you watch Medivh played by Sport Billy for this fifth pick. Are you thinking another warrior to help control these portals? Now again, I've seen a few strategies used by them in scrims, and I can't really talk about it until it's picked, but uh, there's a few things they could do. I expect something more normal, though. So uh, when talking about a more normal setup, I would say another frontliner maybe, but I would love for them to just show some of that crazy stuff. They have so many strats. It's insane. It's really difficult going up against them. But yeah, I expect something more, that, something melee heavy that helps them out a bit at the front line. The Ragnaros finish up. Ragnaros works in that role, has a bit of self-sustain up at the front. It's great also to deny objective value to the opponent once the Punisher moves in. And he just helps out with the Grim a bit. It's also a great tool if you just sync up the additional stun with this ult. So now it's all about Expert and their Greymane double support, how they can keep Greymane alive, get the engages they want, lock down their opponent, but also control Mediv. Where if you look over to the playing Ducks, this is a composition that they are very comfortable with. They have heroes they've been playing in and out for the last few weeks. What I would have said before we've seen the last picks for playing Ducks is help with that comp. Go into Tyrael Judgment, drop the ult on Ragnaros, Greymane jumps in, it's more or less a guaranteed kill, but now we have not only Cleanse on Rhaegar and Ancestral Healing, on top of that we also have the Medivh, and that just shuts that down hard. So I do not believe that we're going to see such an aggressive composition, but jumping in with a Tyrael, dropping the Sanctification and enabling Greymane that way should already put a lot of pressure onto the Ducks. A lot of pressure onto the Ducks. We'll see if they can pull it off here. It will come down to the Horrifies, as we always talk about. The Horrifies coming out and really stopping Greymane from being effective. If you can hit Greymane, have him walk into the team, and also hit a support and make sure they can't save him, that's usually when you get those kills and you can pull them off. Now, in terms of wave clear, Golden Sonia, Sonia, great around the Shrine phase. The four-man rotation is great for the Ducks. Expert has some solid tools with Gunning Cocktail and Greymane, and also Ragnaros in his lane, but it comes down to really the Shrine phase. How will Ragnaros handle the pressure coming his way? Can the Ducks get around that and maybe be aggressive and push down forts instead? It all comes down to the macro, it really feels like. I personally like the Ducks uh, setup very much, though. I yeah. really like that draft. I think having Sport Billy on Medivh is going to be fantastic for them. Having the Sonya being enabled also by Medivh is great, and then Gul'dan should have so much space in that backline. So I think they have a very strong draft, especially to win the Punisher. Well, it's game one, Infernal Shrines. Let's go into it. The Ducks hoping to take on Expert. 
And well, we are going into our first map now. It is Infernal Shrines, and we have in the series between Team Expert and Playing Ducks, the Experts to the left side in blue with Lucio, played by Kirsten, Blade on Ragnaros, Nick on Greymane, Bad Benny on Tyriel, and we see Oriel controlled by ADRD. To the right in the red, the Playing Ducks. Wolf Joe will be on Rhaegar, Chris Explosion on a new Anubarak. We're gonna have Sport Billy playing the Medivh. We're gonna have Gold Dan played by Chris, and Nande will be on Sonya. None on the Sonya here, and of course, we are gonna see Sport Billy again with these Leyline Seals. Are they today on fire? Are they on point? Can they take this series? The standings are not going to be influenced by the result of this game, but it is a bit of a preview for the playoffs. And those are, of course, the important part for both of these teams. Testing the waters here today a little bit. Eddie already dancing in the middle. Spray paint game is on point as well. <laughs> They're really enjoying that. And Greyman immediately misses the cocktail. And Diva is one of my favorite spray paints to use. Picking up that one as of late. Unlocking it there with the uh, next challenge. Experts clearing out the middle side here. We're going to have our rotations popping up, and the Ducks get a slight lead in the rotation due to the portal there from Medivh, getting them come down to the bottom. Now, Ragnaros, Sonia will be in the top lane, and Ragnaros kind of falling off in terms of a laner, but he can still hold lanes well and absorb experience as long as he's careful. Sonia, meanwhile, can be incredibly aggressive. And Chris also moving out here, and while the rotation is happening, I have to chip in on that uh, spray paint. Um, talk a little bit. First of all, I love that we have a Zerki Cal. That's already amazing. The one point where I think Blizzard really dropped the ball is when it comes to the... Uh, I'm not quite sure what they're called, but it's the old, the traditional portraits that they have. We have portraits for every Warcraft 3 race. Mm. You have the elves, you have uh, the humans there. So it, everything is basically set up. And then you have also Arthurs in here. And what do we get for the Undeads? Do we get the cool one with a skull? No, we get simply Lich King Arthurs. That is really dropping the ball, Blizzard. It's such an amazing thing that we had back then when you had the Collector's Edition. There's amazing paintings in there. And we don't have that as a portrait. I personally, as an Undead, I'm very much offended. You're devastated. I, I am. And I think it needs to be changed. So Blizzard, if you hear my cry here, please. Just but the problem is, now when it gets changed, suddenly Arthas gets taken away and people are like, what the heck, Arthas is way cooler than Kaldor's dumb skull. But he's in already for the humans. All right. You enough. haven't even, you, you can't even, you haven't even played Warcraft 3. I mean, yeah, I played it, I just don't remember it. <laughs> Okay, so the Shrine is being attacked here. Tricked already having some early on amnesia as we have Medivh taken down. Oh boy, that's not the start that the Ducks were hoping for. They are jumping onto ADRD, but as Anubarak engages, it's Medivh that is biting the dust here. Yeah, it's pretty difficult as Medivh in the early game. If you're not on point with your positioning, Dive can kill you quickly after you use a Force of Will. So Sonya diving in with the Grey Mane, the damage up front just burned through him instantly. Rhaegar had a heal, but not quite enough. And Expert continues the trend of killing the Ducks here as they get two kills and the playful Ducks playing <laughs> Ducks, playing <laughs> Ducks. <laughs> We'll lose two members, and now Expert will finish the Shrine phase. So much win. So much win. <laughs> Guys, you should see his face right now. Punisher's pushing bottom lane, Kaldor. I cannot believe, by the way, how Chris Blosion is getting bullied so hard the last few weeks. The, I mean... They this is a Nubarak. Like yeah, every time he plays an Anubarak. The last time he played, we saw him on, on Dragon Shire just getting taken out over and over again. And in this case, he's just becoming the punching ball in the HGC at that front line. When he moves in, he got pushed around by Lucio. He got the Taman strung into a corner. So he gets, just gets kicked from the left to the right, the right to the left, and then they take him down. He's trying to escape, but he can't. He's really one of the main targets currently in every series they play. It's because they keep him as a solo tank of Nubrak. And while I understand a Nubrak string from where he brings in the real pressure, I think Expert identified this. That's why they didn't go for the Nubrak right away in the first couple of slots. They're like, okay, well, if we don't pick it up here, maybe the Ducks will pick it up. And if they have a solo tank of Nubrak, we can just go for the aggressive play. And the thing is, Chris Bloge is not playing particularly poor. It's just pretty hard for him to pull off the solo tank here when you have Medivh uh, floating around. Now, granted, Sonya is considered a tank here, but 
Chris Blogian, man, having a hard time on that Anubrek. When his Varian, his ETC, Murden are all really strong, maybe we should start having him more on that Zeros. Yeah, I also have to say that Expert is playing this very clean and crisp right now. They're looking at level 8. They have the level 7 talent, of course, a bit earlier than the Ducks, who are just now picking up level 7. But overall, Expert is having very good rotations here, very good team fight control. And they are making the plays at this point. Now, level 10s are, of course, opening up a few more avenues for the Ducks where they can just set up good fights with the Leyline Seal and also the Horrifier and Gul'dan. But so far in this game, Team Expert has shown some very incredible coordination, and that is looking really good. Yeah, their early game has been great. And normally you would start looking at the Ducks when you're behind, or any team, and say, okay, what do they have at 10? Do they have a power spike in? For this match, yes, the Ducks do. Goldan has Horrify, Anubarak has potentially Cocoon here, or even Swarm to dive on the back line. But then you look at an expert and you're like, wait a minute, they have scary tins too. You have Grey Maid, can go and do any of the heroics that we like here. Sanctification to nullify maybe a Leyline Seal engage if he's able to duck around. And then, of course, Ariel with Aegis. Yeah, so uh, let's see how they're going to play this right now in the, the next shrine phase, because that shrine is activating as we speak. The top lane. Basically a stalemate since both of the camps were taken, but Expert is so close to level 10 that it's very likely that the Ducks are going to give it up. They should not fight here, but they're trying to get value at that bot lane. They get a kill on Ragnaros, actually. Blade gets picked off here. Kirsten attempted to keep him alive, but with an aggressive portal in, the Ducks were able to use the power to get in on the dive. Now, level 10 does it. As you mentioned, Expert's massive lead here is able to handle a single loss as Ragnos gets picked off, and the Ducks will take the chance here to push into the middle lane. Yeah, they are pushing through that mid lane right now. They have Rega still at the bot lane for the added experience, but already 17, 18 minions now for Team Expert. Level 10s have not all been picked yet, especially ADR is waiting to see if he goes, wow. for the, yeah, he goes for the resurrection. He gets a Tyrael is being blown up. But it doesn't matter too much since Aureal can immediately resurrect the target and there should be no problem for Tyrael to move out of this. All right, Tyrael's back here, but good play by Nande. Over the wall, landing that Q on top of Tyrael and getting a kill. The Ducks have fought their way back into the game here as it will be 29-0. to zero. They have a chance to start the Shrine phase. Should have Expert be able to finish it up, especially with Molten Core being used, and they will go ahead and attempt to break down whatever they can. Yeah, we see Ragnaros going full raid boss mode here immediately, and the Ducks are right after that, just moving out. They're saying, okay, there's no way we actually get this. And that was a smart move. Expert normally wants to hold Molten Core back. You want to hold it back so you can defend. But if you know that popping Molten Core will give you the Punisher, then it's always worth it. Always worth it here. As we're going to have the push happening. So Fierce Smash is available. Ragnaros is floating around, thinking about going in the bottom lane. But without Sonya showing up on the map, he's going to stay near his teammates to assist. Good play by Blade here. Leyline Seal does come out. ADRD is the focus, but he respawns back with the detainment strike. Ult's going down. Sanctification, Sophia Smash, Ancestor healing, all being popped in the last couple seconds. And ADRD and crew will survive and keep pushing. Horrify, not getting the value they were hoping for. The Sanctification was already on the ground. They didn't hit the target that they were aiming for in this case. So no kill for the Ducks. Here comes the Punisher chasing in deep. And Bad Benny is high on the heels of the Ducks as they turn around against ADRD. Sound barrier is being used though. Cocoon on the ground now as well. Gets taken out though. Bad Benny being healed, the double support. But definitely showing up in this fight, keeping everyone alive, and Grey may not even using the curse bullet here. So the Ducks lose the fort, are still behind by an entire level, and are not able to get the kill they were hoping for. I want to call out Tyrael and Nick there. First off, the sound barrier came out. Lucio got cocooned right away. We had Tyrael get aggressive on the gold end to force the playing Ducks to expect the idea of Tyrael coming in for an engage with the Greyman, and Greyman at the time getting Lucio out of the cocoon. It's a solid cocoon control there by Team Expert. Now, Merc's being grabbed. We're looking towards level 13 as Ragnaros is clearing out the bottom lane. The Ducks keep looking for an opportunity to go for an engage, but so far, Expert is playing so close to each other that they have knocked out the option to isolate a target and kill them. Expert is playing this really well, and I'm just happy that we see Resurrect Jake in so many times these days, thanks to the double support. It's really cool that the double support play enables that to be an option. So we have right now Expert pushing for 13, of course. Getting the extra talent gives them a very dominant position on the map, and they use that to take the 4 down. Leyline Seal being used again, Molten. but here comes Blade, Molten Core, and they go straight in, and he completely whiffs his ult. 
with Seolt there. Nande will live and also get healed. Blade on the back right is in trouble as the crew of the Ducks turn around. The horror fight comes out after the Saints vacation. Expert is holding here. Blade low, the sound barrier to save him. Now suddenly Nande's low. Nande is very low. He's about to fall by Wolf. Joe saves him for now. Chris Blosion gets the shield from Medivh. But then the cocktail hits and it hits hard and Nuburak is down and that is another kill for Expert. They walk away from this one. Looked very, yeah, very tricky for one moment, but Expert still coming out ahead, getting the kill. And also first on the Shrine that is about to activate. Is that two sanctifications that have nullified two yes. horrifies here now? That's yep. incredible. Both. That Both horrifies that were used so far did not get value because of those things. So material definitely absolutely on point. Yeah, because those are reads. Like you're reading your opponent. Gold in going in for the horrify is pretty much an instant cast, which means you need to get ready for that sink on the earlier side. And Bad Benny has been on point both times. Big kudos to him there as he stopped two horrifies from really destroying his team. Now the shrine has begun. Team expert is ahead here. 31 to 0, while Tyrael's in the top lane dealing with this four-man push. You know those movies where someone has the ability to just look two seconds into the future? Most of the time you argue that it doesn't really give you anything, you can't predict the lottery or anything, but you could be the best pro gamer in the entire universe you if you had that ability. God. Yeah, you would be a god because you can react to anything that happens there. It would be such a fantastic tool to have. If I if I have a superpower, that would be it, and then I'm going to become the I'm, I'm going to become the new boxer. Look at Calvin. And if you here. guys out there are pulling a dread right now and you don't know who boxer is, then shame on you. Reported. Shame on you. Google it. I just think it's hilarious that you want a superpower so you become better at video games. You don't want to save the world. You don't want to grow trees and plants. You just want to come in and get number one in Hero League. Screw the world and screw Hero League. I want to be on that competitive stage. All right, that's fine. Actually, I don't want to be there. I'm really happy with the spot where I'm at, but I think Expert is also happy in the spot they are in right now because they are once again shutting down an attempt by the Ducks to force a fight here. The Leyline Seal was strong, but Blade right away dropping the Molten Core. And as we've been talking about him, our boy Tyrael with a fantastic sanctification negating any potential for the Ducks to get a kill. And here's the thing too, look at bottom lane. There has Mercs pushing in already, so we're gonna have to get those defended. Now they are Impalers, they don't destroy right away, but they will help clear out those waves. So Chris will head down there and clear it out. And playing Ducks wouldn't have minded that fight, especially with 16 not being around for Expert. But so far, the Molten Core usage, right when the Leyland Seal popped out, prevented the playing Ducks from getting the engage they wanted, and Expert will now soak lane to get 16 and be ready for the next shrine. Now, the playing Ducks are going to have a bit more lockdown potential once they're on 16, and we have the Earth Grass totem for Rega. He picked up his uh, level 1 totem for the increased radius, so that synergy is really strong. It's something that helps them a bit. I also like that we are having him on 13, just trying to provide the extra shield so he has a bit more time dropping a quick Ancestral. It's all about keeping the heroes alive right now, especially when we're talking about someone as vulnerable in these situations as Anubarak, because as you pointed out, Cocoon has been taken, so that makes him a bit more vulnerable. You can force a fight a bit easier and you have value in the team fight, but you lose a lot of the sustain and the beefiness that that hero was oftentimes associated with. So having Medivh in your setup and then also the level 13 talent for Rhaegar and the potential extra time advise you for an Ancestral is really important to keep these heroes alive. Expert pushing in the middle. They're just hoping to get the mini ways pushed out. Not really looking too much for a fight unless the Ducks make a mistake and overextend. The idea is to push in your middle on your bottom lane so you can be ready for the Shrine phase and get an idea of where your opponents are at while they're clearing out that experience. Now they know four members are in the middle for the Ducks and Rhaegar is in the bottom so they'll be able to make a play if they would like. They're actually rotating the bottom to get, again, pressure from those mercenary camps. Now Greyman going for the 16 here. I'm not quite sure how much value is going to be able to get out of the talent. Had a few more options, but the 16 target overall is just really strong. If you can get a good stun in and you explode on the same target, it adds so much value. I love how the ducks are currently invading the bot camp and are able to grab it, but that of course brings them far away from the top lane where the shrine is spawning and Ragnaros is already on the point. But the ducks, they want to push this down at the bot lane because they really need the experience for 16. They really need that experience, and Ragnaros is taking the time to wail on that shrine. 13 to 0. Expert defends the bottom lane, will be able to maneuver around just like the Ducks here and get towards that top lane. And man, 23 to 0. Expert is definitely going to get the shrine. And here's the thing it's an Arcane Punisher. 
It's deadly. Yeah, Arcane Punishers are definitely still the strongest in the game. And I don't have to explain it to anybody who played Diablo 3 at any point in their life, because those Arcane Sentries, they have cost the lives of many a hardcore character. At this point, though, the Ducks are trying to claim that for themselves. And this is the moment when Expert just healed up, is moving in again with that double support. And look at Ragnaros. Yes, there we have it once again, the Molten Core. He prepared it with 25, 27 stacks. And now the Molten Core is dropped. But this time, the Ducks are not willing to move away from it. They are not. And Sport Billy is looking for a Leyline Seal. So far, though, the supports in the bottom are just spreading out. That way they can cover each other. If ADRD gets hit, Lucio can pop Sound Barrier. If Sound Barrier gets hit, you can have the Resurrect to follow up. Here's the Leyland Seal. It hits two members. Got to have the Sink instantly out here. Horrify is still available, so the Ducks still have a chance to make a play, but the Punisher uh -oh. has gone over. Chris Plosion again hammered into the ground, went for the Cocoon. Didn't matter. Another Ragnaros oh. ult is hitting nothing though, but it does not matter since Wolfjoy is still finding himself in the middle of the pack. It's the wrong pack though. He falls. It's a double kill for Expert. They get the punish on top of that too, and they make it a triple as Medivh is also dead and dying. Great play by Expert, a good fight for them. And this is a ducking disaster on the side of the red team. Yeah, experts pushing in the top lane, and they are looking for a key, possibly. Three members down for the Ducks, and as you mentioned, they are just not in a solid spot right now. Not able to float on water. They're just hoping to get around as much as they can and clear out their opponents, but Blade steps forward, and he looks aggressive. So many of the ults haven't even been used there. No answers, so no horrify. You have to ask yourself what the Duck is going on here. 18 versus 16 right now. The keep is down. Ragnaros already jumping around it, but he should be on cooldown still on the Molten Core. But Expert, they want more. They are looking to see if they can get a kill and carry this to an early victory. A kill would be good. They also can dance around for 20 seconds and get aggressive with Sanctification. However, with the Ducks having all members spawning and a portal coming up, here's a Leyline Seal. Bad Biddy's by himself. He's able to juke the opponents and get back towards his teammates for the shields. Also, Chris has... An, oh, there comes the Cocoon once again. Dropped right Sank away. Sank in five. Yeah, Sank in five, and also with the Cocoon dropped. I don't think they should really chase here. But then again, they want to fight. It's 19 versus 16. If you don't fight now, when will you? But that was a great cocktail. So much damage pushed on the Ducks. They need to really worry about engaging now. Yeah, that Benny being on top with those cocktails, really just keeping up with the harassment. That's where I constantly see Nick bringing out that damage. It's one of the fantastic things if you have the level 7 quest on Greyman completed. Mm. The damage that you get with a poke is out of this world. So he's doing a fantastic job chunking them down from far away, and it makes it very difficult for the Ducks to engage into these fights. All right, 20 around the corner. Playing Ducks are in desperate mode now. They are grabbing whatever mercs they can, any pressure they can put on the map, trying to see if they can catch Expert out of the uh, catch here. Expert on the other side, they're dancing around. Shouldn't really go for an engage unless they see an isolation available for them. But 20, almost half a level away, and already a keep down the top right corner. They are sitting pretty. They are indeed, and uh, we have now 20, half a level away. That's the only thing that Expert cares about, of course. But uh, they're still trying to fight. They're looking to see if they can maybe get a quick grab since they have Medivh visible at the bot lane. And this is all that is this about. Have vision on the minimap. It's your most important tool in the game. And once that you see that your opponent is not in full force on the map, you are eager to use that fight as an opportunity. Also keep Blade in mind. He still has the option to go for the Molten Core. He has it available again. Molten Core could be devastating for those kills. The Ducks, 18 and 19, and this is kind of a moment where I think you just have to make a play. You go in for it, at a disadvantage, and hope you can get a kill. There is always a chance for defense, but as you mentioned, the Molten Core is pretty much game ending if you're at behind 20 to any level before 20. And look how passive they are. Look how passive Expert is. They are just a sliver away from level 20. They do not want to lose a hero now. They're saying, why would we fight? Just get that 20 and then take the battle. And 20 is there. Storm Talents have been taken. Nick is being attacked though. Nick attacked. Oh, Leyline wow. Seal in the back, shutting the supports down. That is the end of Gramian, but he gets resurrected. He gets resurrected here. Going to have the sound barrier coming out as well. Wanted to make sure they didn't get hit. <laughs> the fair smash does hit Rhaegar in the back right, but the Ducks are surviving and they're biting back. <laughs> the light speed coming out on 24 for Aurel, and all of a sudden, Greyman, after being resurrected, turns into a race car, runs them down, and now we're having Wolfjaw low, Chris Plosion, two 
Ragnaros again with the Molten Core. Sonya has already fallen. Horrify comes out, but Wolf Joe is about to fall. Nick wants him. And Rega, is he able to escape? He actually is. But Chris Closion using the portal, moving out of there. It was a nice attempt on the side of the Ducks, but it is just too much. And their core is taking damage between all of this since we had catapults chunking it down. Three points only, and of course killing the shield, but they have to disengage. They don't have Sonya, they don't have 20, and they took damage here. And this is a frozen Punisher for Team Expert, and they are going to at least look for a keep. Sport Bill is going to scout the opposing team. Should see some clear in the middle and maybe the top, so we can get the Ducks closer to 20, but a full level behind, as you mentioned, is incredibly scary. We need to have this Punisher baited over before the keep follows. That way the Molten Core can't be aggressive. Yeah. Actually, Molten Core was used, so it's not going to be able to be used. But still, Blade starts to move in here. We're going to team's getting aggressive, and Sulfur Smash and Sync up in about 10 seconds. It was it was really the first time I've seen light speed used on Orion. It is just quick, fun, right? Funny as hell. Yeah, it's also when the target that you resurrect stays alive, you basically reduce your cooldown by 50%. So that's super important here too. Rega is down. Sink. This is just brutal. The Ley Line Seal is there, but it's not going to get any value for them. They are desperately trying to stay alive, but the Punisher is on the core. Sound Barrier is in. This is, this is not looking good. This is not looking too good at all. The core falls down to 25%, falling more. We're going to have the Punisher baited over the keeps. A solid job, but finally the Molten Core does become available, and the final shots will get the core killed off. The Ducks will lose the first game, and Expert will get a 1-0 victory. Expert looked really solid. The one thing, if you want to nitpick, I think we can talk a bit about how Ragnaros had a hard time getting his ult connected. We saw two that were completely missed, but outside of that, they had very good coordination in the fights. Yes, Nick face checking the last push might be a bit of an issue here, but it was also a great play from Sport Billy, who disabled it for two supports in the backline with a quick Leyline Seal. That was the only uh, reason why they could even kill Greymane. And then all it took was really Aureol using her level 20 ability, her heroic, make sure that Greymane comes back in and they were looking strong there. So overall, Expert with a pretty fantastic show in game number one. Expert continuing to be fantastic in their matches. We'll see if they can continue to do so in game.